welcome to Edison Open House Space 2022. Now, in this session, we're going to do something slightly different. Rather than focus on a company with a specific space offer, like satellites or uh, geolocation, we're going to feature one that has a unique overview of the whole sector, Seraphim, the global leader in space tech investment. And with me is its CEO, Mark Bogart. Mark, I'm so excited to meet you. Hello. Thank you. Hi. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me along. Now, in space, everything is exciting. It must be like being a kid in a sweet shop. And how do you even think about what is space fiction and what is potentially space fact? Well, space has changed significantly over the last handful of years. And that's um, largely thanks to, uh, to, to, to a number of factors. Elon Musk, with his incredible reusable rockets at SpaceX, have dramatically reduced the costs of sending a kilo into space. So an, an 80x decrease um, since the 1980s. And at the same time, there's been a revolution in the creation of satellites. Satellites used to be the size of a car or the size of a bus, costing hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. And now uh, technology solutions are taken from other sectors that have been finding their way into the creation of satellites. So they have now been made smaller, cheaper, lighter. So bringing those two things together, it's possible to put up constellations of hundreds or even thousands of satellites. And that's completely changed the dynamics of space. So from an investment perspective, it's leveled the playing field. We now look at uh, investments in space side by side with investments in other technology sectors. So uh, we would look at a space opportunity in exactly the same way that somebody is looking at another deep tech market, whether um, you know, that's around um, uh, uh, the future of, um, of motor cars or planes or any of these areas where deep technology is, uh, is in consideration. So um, like any other investment fund, we're really focused on the people that we're looking to invest into. We're typically investing quite early stage um, in this market. So the trust that we're investing through, the Seraphim Space Investment Trust, is, uh, is predominantly focused on early stage growth. That means these companies have already got the technology, they're already operating. So we're really focused on the people and to determining their, their skills to execute against their ambitious plans. So the thing that we have in our favor as the uh, leading global investor in this market is that we get to see the majority of the deal flow in the market. And what, we, uh, what we've uh, identified is that we're seeing more than 75% of all of the companies that are looking to raise money in this market routinely on a monthly basis. So that puts us in a very privileged position where we've got an information asymmetry. So we can stack rank all of the private companies that are looking to uh, build a business in a particular area and compare them side by side so we look at the businesses that have got the best combination of great people and then sustainable differentiation within its peer group of whichever particular technology uh, that they are, that they're focused on. So, so really that is how we go about making investments in space. There's no rocket science involved. It's just about having this huge view of everything that's going on in the market and then finding those that, that, that are uh, being led by the uh, most capable teams and individuals. But in terms of sustainable profit growth, what's really exciting you that's new in the space sector? So um, the uh, space sits at the nexus of a whole range of megatrends. So from our view, um, the uh, space is creating a, a new digital infrastructure in the sky that's really going to drive a whole range of societal change. And that, that is led by um, trends in climate, um, trends in connectivity, being able to connect the 50% of the world that today can't connect to the internet, um, uh, around mobility. So uh, being able to um, uh, effectively space is the autonomous element of autonomous mobility. Space data that's the driver of your autonomous vehicle, that flies the flying taxis, that brings the drone deliveries from Amazon to your front door. We've then got um, uh, uh, smart cities, IoT. So these are big megatrend areas that. Um, that, that space is really playing a key part in. So um, we are particularly interested in, in, in opportunities around climate and sustainability, because we're, we're, we're now entering an era where we've, we're gathering the data sets that are required to help us make some really informed decisions about climate and sustainability. 
to be able to use resources like water more efficiently, but also to be able to identify the bad actors that are chopping down rainforests um, and so on, and to be able to hold them to account. So those are the areas that we as a, as a fund are really focused on um, because they are profitable and sustainable, but they're also going to address the market. The other sort of key category area within space that we're interested on is, is really we're taking a contrarian approach. Most of the money that's been invested in space has been invested in launch, and then it's been invested in these constellations that the, the satellite companies that are putting up hundreds or even thousands of satellites. The area that's not had the focus by the investment community is what we call downlink. So these are the technologies that um, allow us to be able to bring the data back down from space, down to the earth, um, and then to, uh, to have all of the security, cybersecurity um, uh, uh, elements of that as well. So over the past five years, the downlink area has really only accounted for two to 3% of the total private investment in this area. So last year alone, $12 billion invested privately in the space market, but a tiny amount of that going into this down, downstream and, and downlink area. So this has been an area of focus for us where we've been investing into cybersecurity, ground stations, antenna technology, because we believe that this is gonna be the next growth area for the space categories. What about the industrialization of space, whether it's exploiting microgravity, whether for you know, solar energy generation, or even um, mining in space? So these are really excited areas, but what we, what we spend a lot of time making sure is that investors are focused on where we are today with space. These are still activities that are going to happen in the future. And yet there are so many exciting things that are happening in space today that's really where we want investors to think about this space opportunity. This digital infrastructure that I've talked about is going to serve all of these mega trend areas. It's a trillion dollar market opportunity today. So that's where we, as the leading investor in this area, spend most of our time. So the industrialization of space, space 2.0, is on the horizon. The first companies are being formed that are looking at these areas of, uh, of solar farms in space and data centers in space and manufacturing in space. But they really are at quite some way out on the horizon. So these are not the areas that we're investing into the fund. We're keeping a careful air, uh, eye on the entrepreneurs that are um, serving these markets and building the businesses to focus on them. And we're engaging with them through our accelerator program. So we, we run um, uh, global programs called the Seraphim Space Camp Accelerator that is exactly designed to engage with these really early new stage companies, try and help them um, uh, access investment from other investors, and then to try and work with the entrepreneurs to make sure that they're positioning their business for growth. So that's really how we're focused at the moment. Uh, the UK has really identified space energy as an area that they believe that they want to play a part in. So the UK, uh, uh, there's an organization in the UK uh, called the um, Solar Energy Initiative. That's, uh, that's a private uh, company working with uh, the UK government uh, that are really trying to bring forward this agenda. We're really focused on it because we think it's a really exciting area, solar farms in space, providing clean energy to our planet. But it's many, many years away, certainly years away before um, it become a, a significant investment in, in a fund like ours. So whenever I ask this question, I really try and bring this um, to, to the here and now because there's just so much uh, opportunity to leverage this digital infrastructure that Space 2.0 is still five, six, seven years away before it's, um, it, it really becomes mainstream for investment. So keep your feet on the ground and concentrate on the on the you know medium term rather than on the long term. Absolutely, yeah. But I I wonder are the disruptors at risk of being disrupted by the rapid evolution of all this new payload technology? So uh, the disruptors at the moment, or the disrupted, is uh, are, are the existing incumbent space companies, the existing launch companies, the existing companies that um, that largely operate from a geospatial remarket. So uh, they, they have uh, largely been financed by debt and they take a very, very conservative view to the technologies that they use um, because each time you introduce a new piece of software or a new piece of hardware, it creates risk. When you're trying to, uh, to, to, to build a business that's focused on a 15-year payback period for your debt, 
you have to be very risk averse. So uh, now where we're focused on new space is around technologies that are low cost, almost throwaway. So it's a lot easier to, uh, to make these mistakes in space. So um, to answer your question, are these new disruptors then going to be disrupted by other new disruptors that come behind them? I don't think so. The, the, the reason for that is there's been, uh, and we're currently going through this massive catch up where space is embracing technology solutions from other markets. And that's happening right now. The companies who are at the lead of doing so uh, as a first mover gain a significant amount of advantages. So first of all, from intellectual property. So uh, most of the uh, players in space, the incumbents in space today, they haven't bothered uh, putting uh, patents around the, the technology areas that they're working on. Many of them um, are uh, operating um, uh, for governments and they haven't felt the need to do so. So that meant that there's a massive um, greenfield opportunity for, 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 for collecting patents around new activities in space. And really, it's the leading companies today that are doing that. So we've got portfolio companies that routinely have 500, 1,000, even 2,000 patents around the technology solutions that they're developing. That's making it life a lot harder for the companies that come uh, behind them. The other thing is that uh, these companies today are, are, are having to build large constellations of satellites. So as they introduce volume production, it, it really decreases the costs and creates a sustainable competitive advantage. And then the final uh, part of this is that um, the companies that we're backing that are demonstrating a leadership position today are really tending to specialize around a particular payload, uh, a technology from space that is giving them a competitive edge. And what, because they are already the leader in that area, they're really focused on maintaining that technology leadership. So they're constantly improving and that makes it really challenging for new entrants to catch up. I mean, for example, we've got portfolio companies today that are on the, the seventh uh, version of their satellites because they're constantly introducing new technology as it becomes available to their existing platforms in space. They've got lower costs because of economies of scale to get satellites into space. Their, space, their spacecraft costs less, and they've constantly used that as a platform for introducing new technologies because the, uh, typically it's only a four to five year period that these new satellites um, are operational for compared to 15 years plus for the traditional space industry. So there's plenty of opportunity for the leaders to continually um, uh, adapt new technologies and uh, enhance their, uh, their positions in space. This is the reason why we're so excited about the market opportunity right now, because there's a land grab for the companies that are um, the emerging category leaders right now, because there are just so many benefits from taking a leadership position in the market today. Mark Bogart of Seraphim Capital, thank you so much for talking to us. It's been fascinating. Thank you.